All right, and welcome back to the next segment in the Dofer A124 WASP filter. Last time we were talking about the basics of this filter. This time we're going to be doing a little bit of demonstration so we can hear what the filter sounds like. Uh, That's going to be this specific segment, um, covering just the basic features of the A124 up here. Um, and then a little bit later, we'll be kind of comparing it to another, uh, I want to put in quotes, standard uh, bandpass, high pass, and notch filter, the A121, which we've explored a little bit before. Oh, sorry, pointing to the wrong one. Uh, right over here, A121. So we're going to be comparing this one to the WASP filter in the next segment. Uh, but let's not get uh, too ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and jump right into this demonstration. Um, I do kind of want to uh, precursor this by showing you exactly what we're going to be doing, as I do in the past. Uh, so let's take a look down in the bottom. I have my trigger sequencer set up, um, and it's got some notes uh, that are going to be feeding an A110. So right here, uh, this is our trigger sequencer. The top row is going to be responsible for a sequence of notes, and then the bottom row is going to be responsible for a second set of notes. Uh, these are both being fed out from this sequencer down into this module down here, the voltage controlled switch. Uh, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of how I set up this patch because it's quite a bit of uh, spaghetti and cables over here going on. Uh, but these are being basically fed out to two locations uh, so that I can get it to go from row one to row two. Um, and if we look over here uh, on the right hand side, uh, we can see that we have a envelope generator that's being triggered, um, and then we have a VCO that's also being triggered. So let's look back at the trigger sequencer section over here, and we'll take a look. There is a cable right over here, this uh, gray cable. It's actually going up and out, and then if we look back at our envelope generator, we can see that that is going over here. So that's basically just taking the two uh, trigger rows over here at the A155 and then feeding them to that envelope over here. Uh, the bottom section of the switch, if we look again over here at the A155, uh, that is actually going out over to the A110 and feeding it notes. I then took the A110, I took two different waveforms, uh, no specific reason other than I like these waveforms. I took the pulse or square wave out and the sine wave out. Uh, for a little bit of variety into my VCA, which is right next to it. My A140 is being fed out uh, over into my VCA, which is going to give us a little bit of amplification at the desired times that are set up by my A155 over there, uh, trigger sequencer. And then the audio out from here at the A131 is going to be going up into our A124 filter. So that's a basic explanation of what the patch is happening at the bottom, but I just wanted to get that out of the way so we know where all these sounds are coming from. At any rate, uh, if you have questions about this or this seems confusing, uh, I do recommend you maybe go back and maybe watch the Duffer A155 analog trigger sequencer segment of videos. Um, they kind of go into great detail about the A155 and the A110, uh, how you can get those triggering. Uh, but for the purpose of this segment, we're going to be looking at the WASP filter. So let's get this patch set up, go back to A131, and then we'll patch out from audio out right there. And then we'll just go straight up into our WASP filter. Here we go. Audio in. There we are. All the way in. Just want to make sure. Okay. And then I'm going to be taking the, well, let's just start with the bandpass out right over here. There we go. And not sure exactly what the resonance setting is going to do here, but I'll just leave it the way it is and then we'll adjust it as we go. So here we go. Input one This is going to be going out to our mixer and we'll get sound. So a very noisy and distorted filter uh, sound that's being created here, but kind of nice in a way. Uh, so let me experiment a little bit and just bring the resonance down a little bit. Okay, so that's a little less distorted. Now if you hear too much distortion and that's not what you want, 
then uh, in the manual it recommends you go back and maybe check your audio input level up here. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And there I'm kind of getting a more uh, stock, if you will, uh, bandpass filter sound. Um, at this point I can go in and adjust the cutoff frequency to get a different flavor of bandpass. That's a very thin sound right there. Or I can bring it down over here. Get yet a different flavor of bandpass. Almost inaudible there. Let's bring it back to the middle, about 12 o'clock. It's kind of my favorite type of bandpass filter sound right there. Okay. Now, let's keep it at 12 o'clock just for a moment. And then we'll go into um, a little bit of... Uh, hearing the resonance in this setting. So we have a standard kind of what we expect to sound like bandpass filter sound. Let's bring up the resonance. Let's crank it all the way up. Very nice. Distortion is kind of nice and cutting out and kind of very uh, watery sounding. I uh, really like this kind of sound. Um, let's kind of play with the frequency a little bit at this uh, extremely uh, distorted sound right there. We're getting a slight different variation of that, but not quite as uh, what I want to say wet. Let's go up a little bit on the cutoff. And there we have just a very thin bandpass sound. Let's play with the resonance a little bit there and see if we can get it to distort. Nope. I think we only had a nice little wet sound over here back in the at the 12 o'clock position right there. Yeah, there we go. Um, at any rate, that's kind of your bandpass kind of effect right there. So uh, just as an experiment, because uh, we should know if we watch the basics one what the purpose of this dial is down here. Let's try and adjust this. Okay, so we're adjusting mix level, and uh, well, not really a lot's happening over here. Um, but we know that it's not supposed to. This actually controls the low pass and high pass balance, and as well as the notch filter in the center. But that's only from this output, so moving this is not going to affect what's coming out here. So just wanted to show that. I uh, didn't mean to throw a curveball at you or anything or confuse you. But at any rate, that is our band pass. Kind of endearing in a way. I kind of like it. Let's bring up our level a little bit and get some nice cranky distortion. So there's a, an even more extreme distortion effect. And I can see my output is distorting quite a bit. I'll bring it down just a little bit. I did want to demonstrate that though, just so you can hear the extremes that you can take this filter to without going into self-oscillation. And it's distortion, so in most cases you would think, well, distortion, uh, that's supposed to be a bad thing, isn't it? Well, uh, in this case, maybe not so much. You might actually like this. I kind of like the way this sounds, uh, as I'm sure some of you out there like the way this uh, filter distorts, as well as, uh, I'm sure, owners of the Wasp uh, synthesizer out there kind of like the way it sounds, too. Um, at any rate, that's our bandpass. So we've, I think we've heard a nice little variety of distortions coming from there. So let's unplug bandpass out, and we're going to hear no sound whatsoever. So there we go. Now, let's take our cable and then go to the next one.